Welcome to Wasega Labs. In this video, we're going to walk through basic configuration for a Wasega Diet PBX. We'll program two intercoms to call each other using the Diet PBX as the SIP server. First, find your device's MAC address. You'll find the MAC address on the label printed on the device itself and on the outside of the box it came in. Make a note of the MAC address because you'll need it later for configuration. Once you've connected your Diet PBX to the local area network using Power over Ethernet, go to any PC in the same LAN and open My Computer. If you're not using Windows or can't discover your device on your network, you can consult your DHCP server's logs or use network discovery tools such as Fing to find your device's IP address. Back to Windows, select the Network view and find Diet PBX under Other Devices. If you don't see your Diet PBX listed, refresh the network view, which will start a search of the devices on the network. You may get a pop-up asking if you want your P to allow your PC to search the network, in which case you should click Yes or Allow. Once you find the Diet PBX with the last four characters of your MAC address you, you just noted, double-click its icon to open its configuration web pages, and it will open up a browser. Once you open the page, you'll be prompted for a username and password. The default username and password are both admin, A-D-M-I-N, in lowercase. Click Login and open your configuration web pages. If you found your IP address using another method, just open a web browser and enter your IP address into the address bar of the browser. Follow the same prompts and open your configuration pages that way. Quick note, Wasika pages tend to prefer Chrome or Firefox for best performance, so if your browser doesn't look like this, Try Chrome or Firefox. Now you're into your PBX configuration. Let's go to your network page first. Right now, the Diet PBX is set for a DHCP IP address. That means your IP address could change, and that's not good if we're going to use this device as your SIP server. You will want to set it to a static IP address, which means it won't change. So change the connection type from dynamic IP to static IP and enter IP parameters that will work on your network. Make sure you enter values that will work on your system, or you might not be able to access your device later on. Once I've entered all my information here, I'm going to double check to make sure all my values are correct. I'll take note of my new static IP address once again, because it's going to be important for the next steps. I like to copy the address before I restart, and you'll see how that comes in handy later. Click Save, double check that that IP address is correct one more time and then click Restart Device. While we're waiting for restart, I'm going to show you another way to access your device. The IP addresses we were just working with are all IPv4 addresses. However, if your computer has IPv6 turned on, and it probably does, you can enter your device's IPv6 address into the browser's address bar and open your configuration web pages that way, no matter what IPv4 address it's assigned to. So that means, if you entered the wrong parameters on the last page, or if you don't have a DHCP server and you can't find your IPv4 address, you can always use this IPv6 address. The IPv6 for all Wasiga devices will follow the same format. Enter these characters into your address bar. No www or http or anything like that. FE80 colon colon 1A39 colon 19FF colon FE00 colon 4154. Now those last six characters correspond with my specific device's MAC address. So mine ends in 004154. You'll change yours to be whatever yours is. I go ahead and log in and I notice that domain is the IPv4 address that I copied and pasted earlier, or that I just copied earlier. This is going to be the domain for your SIP server. So you'll use it as the domain for all devices using this Diet PBX as your SIP server. That's why it was important to copy it. Now let's go to the extensions page and add our extensions. You'll notice that extensions 1001, 2, and 3 are pre-configured. They all have passwords already, and the password is just another extension, or just the same as the extension number, 1001, 1002, or 1003. Let's customize these extensions. The first thing I want to do is change the labels so they make more sense to me. One of these extensions will be assigned to my front door intercom, and the next extension will be assigned to my reception desk. I won't be using the third extension in this application, but I'll leave it there just in case we need it later. 
press save and I'm ready to assign these to my intercoms. Let's go configure our intercoms now. Open up your intercom web pages the same way you open up your Diet PBX web pages. You'll notice I like to use the IPv6 address so I can always find my device, no matter what its IPv4 address is. My first intercom is going to be the front door intercom. I'm going to begin by assigning this intercom an extension. Go to the accounts page and check use SIP server. Put an identifying name for the display name. This display name is used for caller ID. You'll notice it's also going to populate over there to the right in the status bar. This is going to be my front door, or my front door intercom. Then put your extension number in the space for username number. This I'm going to use for extension 1001. The domain you'll remember is the IP address of my Diet PBX. I press save and it wants to restart the SIP service. This is not a device reboot, so it won't take long at all. No big deal. You'll notice that my status over here has changed from account not configured to configured but not registered. That means something is not right. Let's go back and look. Ah, oh, forgot the password. So put in the password 1001, save changes, restart SIP service. Ah, now I'm registered. Let's go back and look at Diet PBX to see what's going on over there. Go to your extensions tab now, click refresh, and you'll see the IP intercom I just registered under binding. This gives me a second confirmation that my intercom is registered with the PBX. You'll also notice that this is a hyperlink. You can open up these web pages anytime and link on over to your registered intercoms through this page. Kind of cool. Now, let's register the second intercom. I'll open it again using the IPv6 in my second intercom, log in with admin admin, and go right to that accounts page to fill out the information for extension 1002, which is my reception desk. So let's go on over to the accounts page and I'll enter in my information for this account. Click use SIP server, extension 1002, display name is my reception desk intercom, domain again is the IP address of my Diet PBX, that's my SIP server, password 1002, save changes, restart SIP service. Now I'm registered. I'm going to go back again, double check at the Diet PBX. Even though it says registered here, I always like to refresh at the Diet PBX. It's nice to see both of those are registered and I know that my system is up and running. Now that our extensions are assigned to our intercoms and they're both registered, let's set them up to make a call. The first thing I need to do is tell my intercom who is going to call. I do this on the buttons lights page. That's where I program the number that my intercom's button will dial. I'm going to change some settings on my intercom so you can hear what it will sound like when you call from one intercom to another. I do want to be able to hang up at both ends, and I also want to be able to ring and not auto answer because I want you to be able to hear what's happening. So I'm changing that from auto answer to six rings, save changes, doesn't need to reboot the device, and let's go make those changes over the other intercom as well. So this is my reception desk intercom. It's going to call the other extension. So this is what extension 1001, I'm sorry, extension 1002 calling 1001. Make the changes that I'd like to see for my intercom. Save them. Turn off auto answer. Save changes. And now let's make a call. I'm going to my intercom. I'm going to press the button. And you can hear it calling. I'm going to press that button again, and in that call, instead of answering it on the other side, my intercoms are a little too close to each other, so you get some ugly feedback if I answered it. But I uh, terminated that call, and it's still showing up in my call log here in the Diet PBX. It's saying request terminated because I stopped the call before I answered it. Had I answered on the other side, it would have said call successful and um, would have had different information here. But for every call that you make, you'll have information here for the call log. 
And that's pretty much all there is to Diet PBX. We set up the PBX, assign the extensions, and make phone calls. If you have any questions or need more information, contact us anytime at wasiga.com. Thank you so much for joining us.